Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Justin. everyone. Hi Justin. Nice to see you, man. Hola, Patty. Put your audio to say hello, man. Hi. <laughs> hello. Hi Justin. <laughs> Hola. 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 Hi, Hi Wendy. Hola. Hey. Hola. Hola. Hi. Hey, wow. How are your How are your Spanish classes, Justin? Oh, très bien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I think your teacher is not the best one in the world. Anyway. <laughs> He's cheap though. He's cheap. <laughs> Amazingly cheap for sure. Chocolates. Mm. Okay, hello Alex, how are you? Are you okay? Everything is working? Hello, yeah, uh, I'm just setting some things up. Also, sure. with you. nice to see everyone. Nice to see you. Thank you. Okay, for the thank you everyone for being here. We are 35 people and more people is coming. Um, first of all, hi Patty, can we double check that your uh, microphone is working? No, we have it's, to put your it's audio mute. In. It's mute. Wait. Similis, similis. Hello, hello. <laughs> How's working? How are you? Good. How are you? Amazingly fine. We love your T-shirt. It's like the one with Alex, red one. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Match. <laughs> so we can see you easily. And I'm on the face. I get to wear lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> You, you have everything, you have thinking everything. That's, that's, <laughs> that's good. So clever. Pasa Caglia, can we check that your that your microphone is working? Hi. Hola, ¿qué tal? Hola. Hola. Yeah, Hola. Nice. I, I think we have everyone that is going to be talking. Uh, okay, if you can unmute your microphone, it's going to be amazing for not having noises everywhere. And also, please put in your name, in your Zoom name, your Instagram account. It would be much easier for everyone to follow you back if they love your work or don't, just to make friends. It would be nice to have your Instagram account there. Okay, so thank you so much for being here. We are so happy that we are so many people participating in this, in this meeting. It has been really a surprise, this, uh, this online exhibition, because we had 152 participants from 37 different countries. And for that, for us, that's something amazing. I mean, having the opportunity with technology to connect people from all around the world, that th these are big news that, 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 that we have because the world is changing, but in some point it's changing for, for good. We have the opportunity to meet each other and at least having this two hours meeting is something amazing that we really enjoy. We, we said with Laura all the time that these meetings are somehow like part of the, of the spirit of the festival because you can really have the feeling that you are together with everyone, that you can embrace each other, that you can share. This is everything that we want from the festival and that's why we have created also the festival at the beginning for finding places to share and to meet each other. And we are so happy that you are also coming with this idea to share with us. First of all, the festival is called Experimental Photo Festival. We have created this amazingly crazy idea two or three years ago. Uh, we had the first festival on one, one year ago in January. It, it was called X20 Manifest because we have created this book that is a manifest of what we think about uh, experimental photography, what's the attitude and the situation of the experimental photography in the world. You can buy it on our webpage, and if you're coming to the festival, you can also buy it. And we have all the artists of the last year, some reflections and ideas about what we think that is uh, experimental photography. And we are thinking now hard how, how it's going to be the next festival, what's the name, what's the concepts, what we want to tell to all this amazing community around the world to have some common ideas. Uh, I want to introduce at the beginning Laura. Laura is our co-director. She's going to be today on the backstage on the machines. I am the 
the front man of all of this, the showman. I am the one doing the stupid things just to entertain you for a couple of hours. And she's <laughs> going to be doing the work hard, okay? Uh, everything in the chat, she's going to be doing it. She's going to put uh, your Instagram account. You can be sharing everything that you want in our chat, your web page and everything. If you are presenting or don't, you can share things there. Everyone is going to be happy to be at the same time listening and also seeing things. Uh, we have also here, we have Astrid and Carol that are working for the festival. That's a great news for us. Also, we have Paula, I think somewhere. Um, they are working with the festival. We are 10, no, now we are 12 people working with the festival. We have so many different aspects. I mean, it's a small festival. That's why it's going to be possible to do it in the summer. We have between 300 and 400 people. I mean, it's, it's not like a big, big, big festival because experimental photography is a small community at this point, but it's going to get bigger and bigger. And that's where we're working for. We have a, we have a big uh, organization to do it the reality as you can see in our communication every day um we have also here we have belen villanova she was the curator of the exhibition hi belen how are you uh, she was the curator of the exhibition the festival hi. also has published a book of her that you can buy also in our web page talking about her work on intervening photography that's why we invite her to be the curator of this exhibition and she's also going to be in the festival and we have also here, we have um, Sara, that is banana cream there somewhere. We have Justin, Hola. that are going to be doing workshops in the festival too. You are going to have fun with them for sure. Um, and we are having different workshops on intervening photography. We have Maria Manuela, also from Argentina. She's not here because she's on vacation and she has not uh, good Wi-Fi but she's also going to be during the festival presenting things. Ah, and also we have Alex Cantaros from Greece here. He's also going to be doing some workshops and conferences during the festival. We are so happy with this. He came the last year as a participant and, and the next festival he's going to be as an selected artist. And we're so happy that everyone is evolving also and keep working hard with her creations. Okay. What we are going to do today, we have already presented the festival, the team, and the activity. What we are going to do in this meeting is the first hour, we are going to be presenting 10 images. Uh, we have created this meeting we have, because we have the feeling that... Laura, someone is talking. Unmute everyone. <laughs> Uh, because we have the feeling, uh, for example, in this in this uh, uh, in this online exhibition, we had 150, 52, and we said, okay, but we can just show nine in our Instagram. <laughs> Laura, you have unmute me also. <laughs> okay. Anyway, can I you had to me? do it too, all sorry. It's okay. because I couldn't find the person who was talking, so I, I just okay. shut down the mic micro to everyone. Okay. <laughs> sorry, anyway, Pablo. No problem. Also, <laughs> uh, we have Maria here also, that she's working with the festival also. Hi, Maria. Nice to, nice Hi. to see you too. Okay, I don't know what I was saying. I was talking about. Ah, I was talking about that we <laughs> had 152 participants, okay, in the meeting, and we said, okay, why, why we are not creating a new place to put more artwork because having just nine selected artists is really hard i mean and we have always the feeling that so many amazing artists has been left apart we have decided to create this meeting to share directly with you and also to show more 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 of your work that's why we have selected uh, 10 more in that case we have nine that are going to be in our instagram in our web page and also 10 more that are going to be presenting today we are going to present their work from the first hour. We ask you to present just taking two or three minutes, please, not longer. If not, it's going to be too long. And uh, present yourself and how you did your work or why. And then we are going to make some questions if we want, if we have some doubts or, or if we have enough time. And in the second part, we are going to go uh, to the small groups we have moderators we have six different moderators that are already here 
all of them. And we are going to be debating uh, about one question, just to meet each other, to know better who we are, and also try to exchange some ideas. These ideas then are going to be shared in the big group. We are going to go back to the big group. For you to have an idea, we are going to be like 20 minutes uh, on the small groups, 20, 25 minutes, depending on, on the time. Okay, do you have any questions? Can you hear me well? Everything is, is working fine for you? Everything is okay? Yes, yes, any questions? Hi, Telma, how are you? How's New York? Snow, snow everywhere, isn't it? What do you say? <laughs> snow, snow everywhere in New York. It's gonna be a big storm again tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. Not, not good news. <laughs> okay, but don't worry because for the summer everything is going to be okay. No snow. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no snow for sure. Okay, do we have Laura here with us? Yes, Laura, we are going to start with you. We are going to start sharing the screen and your image. Please explain us uh, a little bit about your image, how you create it, because we are we are we are surprised. We want to know what how you did this. Okay, um, I did this. I took um, a print image uh, that was mine, that was for uh, uh, part of another project. And um, it was a photograph about the sky with a very little uh, cloud on it. And I decided to cut it on top so I cut a little piece um, from one edge to the other edge. And then I um, knit a crochet okay. with a thread that I uh, choose. I have to done it, this uh, two times because the first thread uh, was not good for the, for the photo. Okay. Um, so then I have this uh, little knit. I uh, stick it in the photo. Okay. Nice. Um, that was well, like the first part. Then I put the this new image in, in uh, how you say a window pane. Uh, that the glass have a, a texture. Uh, you know, there are some old glasses like that in the houses when I, I have one. Um, <laughs> so uh, I have this um, thing that the light was coming uh, through the photo and I can see, I could see the texture. And then I uh, thought, oh, I have windows uh, in the window because uh, with the neat thing, uh, I have like uh, little windows. Uh, so I decided to uh, stick um, uh, in the other uh, in the other part of the glass in the um, uh, the one that goes to the exterior part. Okay. Yes. Uh, little um, uh, flowers and leaves that I have once uh, pick up, nice. or as you say that. Uh, it was a, a bash that I really love that um, there is in my neighborhood. And uh, the flowers are very, very tiny, so uh, it fixed uh, perfectly. And well, the, so <laughs> I have this. <laughs> then I took uh, uh, photos with a reflex a digital uh, camera. Okay. And after that, I began to play a lot with a uh, macro, with the macro okay. lens. Okay. Okay. It's, it's an amazing photo. I mean, I think as you said, it's like a window. You know, we have like the sky and also we have like a window in the sky and everything is, is blue and, and and I think I think I think it's a great result because at the same time it's, it's like make you think what you are seeing you know it's not so easy to know what's happening in this in this photo you know no yes uh, uh, that's uh, because that's why uh, then I uh, play with the macro 
but I, I like uh, this thing that uh, you have to think about. I think I do this in most of, of my uh, photos. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, uh, any questions for Laura? Does anyone has any question? Yeah, uh, Laura. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. We can yeah. hear you. Um, you said you took a picture of clouds, um, and um, but is the um, the blue you see on the um, um, downside and upside is that that the print of the picture? You okay again? No, I I don't understand. Um, first, you said you took a picture of uh, or of the sky. Yes. Yes, uh, and um, is the uh, down and um, upside of this uh, photo um, the prints of that uh, picture? Do you understand what I mean? No, I, yes, I, I, I thought that was the case, but I didn't know for sure. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, isn't it? Um, she took a picture of the sky, and then she took a picture with this glass. It's like a like a texture side glass. Mm -hmm. That's why it looks like like sky, but at the same time with this uh, tiny. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not just a, just a sky, but also like this tiny. As you can see in the upper part, like these blocks, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm sorry, I misunderstood your explanation in that case. Yes, thank you. No, thank you so much. Okay, Laura, thank you so much. We love your image. Thank you so much for sharing it with us and also being here. We are going to be with you, Meryl, now showing your picture. Can you explain how you did this picture? Um, yes, I have it uh, right beside me, <laughs> in fact. Wait, I'll turn on the light, so I don't think you'll see. I have some uh, candle light over here and it's very cozy, but it uh, doesn't give, <laughs> give much light. And you have I got... lots of, of plants also. I love that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> Felt an uh, instant connection. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have this uh, book and um, I found it when I was uh, cleaning up uh, at my dad's house. And it's an old agenda of his. And um, uh, I decided to uh, fill it with my own, um, or I decided that it would be a space for experimentation uh, for me and just to be, uh, try to be very impulsive with um, how I create images and um, how I um, uh, destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is actually the first page that I did in this book. So it's very interesting. You picked it here. Is it in? A, <laughs> I want to say in 3D, but it's not in 3D for you, of course. <laughs> um, but I uh, got some other work in here as well. Some of these um, scans of these images are on my Instagram, and others aren't. Yes, yes, and it's yes, still yes. an ongoing uh, project. And I made this one with. Um, um, yeah, I can't point um, at anything on your image, but. Um, this is a print of um, a uh, picture I took with my digital camera a few months ago of my back <laughs> um, in our garden and I printed it and it's basically um, uh, the rest is uh, paint <laughs> and a I yeah and leaf indeed yes um, and that flower I think I, I don't really know uh, <laughs> but that was yeah, but, but it's really um, me writing everything down I think about at that moment and uh, trying to um, find new techniques um, um, while working on um, this, whatever it will be, <laughs> this, this old agenda at the moment. Nice. And what does it say? Start? Emulsen? Oh, uh, yes, soft um, impulses. Yeah, it, it, it is in Dutch. Um, ah, but, okay. but uh, yeah, I, I, what does uh, it mean? Um, yeah, I, I just write it down uh, <laughs> when I think about it, but I think it that's uh, kind of served as a reminder for myself to um, 
um, I tend to think a lot, or I used to think a lot in concepts and uh, what will this mean, what will that mean, and um, I think that was a remind for myself to uh, be impulsive and to okay. really work in a way that I um, that is um, really like oh I that looks interesting so I can do more of that and way less on a um, intellectual level if that makes yes, sense yes, 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 yes and it's perfect I mean it's the best way to start a new book that you are destroying in some point can you show mm -hmm. us the rest of the book I yeah, of course. I want to see like the, the, the not intervened part of the book, you know? Yeah, um, I, I have, uh, you can see it over here. You uh, <laughs> you see, this is what I have uh, have uh, <laughs> touched and uh, this is uh, what I haven't touched so far. Um, it's really, it's all notes from my dad from uh, 2013. Oh, okay. But I, uh, okay, it's like it a would... calendar. Okay, like an agenda, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I said agenda. I don't know if that's a real word. Yes, 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 I, I didn't get it. It's, it's correct, it's correct, I didn't get it. Yes, no, um, but um, um, actually uh, yesterday or uh, two days before, uh, I was working on a page and it was exactly um, for this date uh, in 2013. <laughs> so that's a nice uh, fun fact. Yes, it's, it's weird because you can go, if you go every day, you can go like rewriting the history of your father Five, yeah. six, years, six years, six years with difference, you know? Yeah, indeed. I haven't thought about it like that, <laughs> but I was like, uh, I can challenge myself to to uh, keep up with um, like every day. It's um, now 8 February is the um, um, okay. next day that is uh, empty. So I, I can make a little challenge for myself to, to um, make something for the day that um, it was in 2013 in uh, okay, the agenda. Seven, years, seven, eight years now. Okay, I think I think that is good to go like day by day. I mean, if, if you mm -hmm. can do it every day, it doesn't matter. But at least if you continue going, not just grab any page, but going one day to the other, and you can see the progress of your mm -hmm, technique. Yeah. You know, that, that can be a good mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, that's what I really like about this project as well. You really see, um, uh, I really went into it with an open mind. It, I don't really even, that's the first time I call it a project. Um, I, I don't even really see it as a project. It's just I do something I do in my uh, past time when I'm like, oh, maybe I can try, try this out or I can try okay. that out. And um, uh, you can really, um, because of that, see um, me trying new techniques and uh, see some repetition in certain techniques, I think um because some things work and some things don't but i <laughs> but i don't know matter. if I, it's a sketchbook yeah. in some point you know yeah indeed yeah it's an uh yeah <laughs> i think i think it can be a good idea if you start publishing on instagram the first of january next year you know once a day during one year that can be amazingly nice because you are rewriting the history of your father that you did mm -hmm. one year ago and you're publishing but every day and people can see your evolution every day you know it can be it can be an amazing amazing nice project yeah you know? i'm i'm just uh one month too late for that i'm afraid right and you now can do but, it the next year but i it can do matter. the next year yes yeah matter. that's a, I, I haven't thought about rewriting the history of my father but that's <laughs> a really cool way to think about it um, I, I can show some more pages, but I don't know if there's enough time for uh, that. No, no, I think we don't have. But anyway, we love it. We love your work. We have new ideas for you to keep working. That's a <laughs> yes. Work. Thank you for the inspiration. And I think you can have a good energy now to keep working. I don't know if every day, but at least you can you can keep going uh, mm -hmm. to understand it more. I hope all our community is going to see this this meeting and this video also in our webpage, and it's going to to follow you back because it's an amazing project. We want to see a, a, a year round. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a small side note, um, the image says Blue Blackbirds, but, but I uh, just changed my username today, which is a <laughs> terrible timing. <laughs> I, I, uh... I was gonna ask you what happened because I was sharing now your your chat or uh... in your chat, your Instagram, and I said, mm, I was sure it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it but was. Then I, saw, I, I see, but, but I'm still following you, so I see you, you are. It's yeah, the it's, it's the same you, account, just the name is changed. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's Uitroeptekens okay. um, now. That's um, um, Dutch for exclam exclamation mark. I don't know if I uh, 
Okay. I pronounced that right. No, I uh, thought of Blue Blackbird when I was uh, 13 or so, but it was a bit <laughs> outdated. Yeah, I, but, oh, sorry? Now you are getting older, like everyone yeah, changing indeed. from Hotmail to <laughs> Gmail, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really cool at the time, but yes, I sure. uh, was like, uh, <laughs> it, it's time for a little change. I think. Okay, thank you so much, Meryl. So, Hope to yeah. see how this go evolves. And we want to listen to Pasa Caglia from Chile, if she can explain us this project that is also intervening photographies. And hi guys, I'm so glad. Um, oh, hi, I'm, I'm very um, thankful to have this opportunity. Um, this, um, the work I'm presenting is called Vital Force or Vital Drive. It's in Espanol, Spanish, um, Fuerza Vital, Empuje Vital. Um, and it's an experimental photograph from last year. I take a um, portrait of my father. My father is, um, is yogi, he practices yoga. So um, I like to show how the, the energies um, cross the body, are, are going through the body. Okay. But I like to take this, is this invisible energy in a visual way in a visual way. So, and, and um, mixing the textures and the materials, like embroidery, painting, um, metallic pencils, flowers, and etc. Nice. Um, you are working I mean, I think, I think, I think your what you wanted to do is is what we can see. I mean, it's amazing because we have here the energy of your father, and also it's it's like an interior. It was done during the during the lockdown during the pandemic. Exactly. Because it's like an interior. The image is inside your house, but at the same time you have nature there. You know. Mm -hmm. It's like the connection exactly. between nature and the space and. And, and everything at the same time that you are inside like the power that your father can have been inside but also outside with the nature exactly the connection the energy for the body and the connection is with the space exactly nice do you have more works with this of this project is it like a long project or is just this image no uh, this project is uh, no there's only one picture but i have i used to um I used to do this with the. I like to portray the to do portraits with this type of interventions, okay. like the forces that um, connect the body with the space, with the universe, with the nature. I can put in the chat um, my page, my my page so, or my Instagram, so you sure, can sure. watch. People can see more more images. Like this is. Um, I really. Um, I have another uh, techniques too, but in this case, uh, not. It's like um, inter, um, uh, using corrosive liquids. Okay, but with photos. But in this, exactly, and another. I'm, I'm just experimenting. Okay. That's what we are <laughs> doing. That's what we are doing all every day, you know. Exactly, and I don't know. I'm just creating like a. A little bit fantasy um, atmosphere because I love the fantasy and okay. and creating new types of entities and I, a little creatures like circles and and lights and some kind of things. <laughs> nice. nice, 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 nice. And how long have you been working with photography? Um, in twenty sixteen, I um, started. I started to intervene pictures. And portraits. Um, big, um, I first of all, I I began with uh, with a portrait, doing portraits, and then I used to experiment with corrosive liquids, and, and then I feel that oh, the liquids are through the body and the soft the body and make another body, another type of body, not a material body, with flesh, another type of arterial, an arterial body, and that was wow, I want to. I want to start um, to experimenting and and 
and do more of this. And then I started to, to put another techniques like embroidery, painting, etc. Nice, nice. Thank you so much for sharing this image with us. And we hope you can keep working with this project. Uh, uh, one, one thing I, I, I think is important, and we are going to be working with this also during the festival, is this idea of having like a project. You know, that this idea of keep going till the end of one idea. We invite you to keep thinking with this, uh, with this idea to have to make more and more and more and more and more, because I think, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you have an idea, you have a, a particular style, uh, and you have a lot of material to work with. We have so many inspiration also on Instagram. Um, thank you so much for sharing this, this with us. This, this energy is, is amazing. I think we need more of this energy, in these hard situations for everyone. Thank you so I'm much. I'm not sure Pasa. there was a question. Sorry. Ah. Guys, happy. Yeah, Alex, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, about the flowers, I want to ask, uh, is it, uh, I mean, uh, you put the flowers uh, to scan the image or was it, uh, ha I mean, I, I need more information about the flowers because it gives like a different context uh, in the meaning. Uh, yeah, just that. Maybe if I understand well your question, it's like the flowers, like a phallic energy for me, really. Like it's like um, some kind of blood, it's like a boom energy that go like um, a sword through the body to the space. I don't know if I understand well your question, but, but you, you have just put it there. I mean, yeah, I, it's, it's like it there. Yeah, the question was uh, why the flowers? I mean, you have al already a uh, painting, uh, and uh, I can see that. Uh, for example, there is a flower that proceeds later to be blue paint. Uh, is it that uh, the specific flowers uh, do um, do convey meaning, or it's just that you had this and yeah? Um, Why you use painting I... and flowers at the same time? Yeah. I think in that case, because um, I just started to putting the flowers in the paper, it's, it's very intuitive. It's like, um, it's like I really like to, because I feel there are two types of different energies. The flowers, I like energy to go like a phallic energy, and the painter is like expansive energy, it's go to another direction. So every material have a different direction, a different kind of um, um, of words. It's like a um, um, capas. Lace, <laughs> lace, like different lace, lace of meaning. Of, exactly. Oh, of spaces yeah. in, in one at the same time. Hmm. Okay, nice. I have a question. Is a, why is the yellow is a dominating in the bottom and also on the top? Is there any particular reason for yellow color? Yellow color. Um, I read, I I didn't think that. I know that the yellow have as significant in the sun and the vital force. I know that, but it's really so. Uh, I I really like the power of the color. I really like the power. It's like have this force, have this power, have this energy, like the sun. Okay. Nice, nice. Thank you so much, Rach. Thank you, Alex. And Pasa, we are going to go with Sara now because we need okay. to try to keep going. Thank you so much. Sara, how are you? Indiana, U US. So I made this picture as part of a larger series and I just put the, on my website, I have the whole series. Perfect. Um, and the series is called 10 out of 10. Um, and I used vintage and found pictures of girls and women um, in the whole series to like link the series. Um, and then they just have different, either vintage magazine pieces um, or contemporary ones sometimes. Um, and yeah, I just have lots of 
I have a large collection of like, <laughs> vintage photographs. So I just culled through them to find ones that focused on women. This is obviously some girl's school picture. Um, and so the series is, I'm basically rating all of them 10 out of 10. Um, <laughs> I think they're all great. Uh, and so I just created this, it has over 50 um, pieces, but it's a series that I made. And uh, it's really my first time in a long time working with collage. Um, and so the project really like pushed me back into that medium that I hadn't used in a while. And it was really like good and fun to like play around with my big collection of vintage photographs and like get to use them for something. Amazing. Follow Sara because she has a lot of different techniques. She has been the last year also in the festival working with uh, different techniques. I can't remember. It was uh, not Antotype. 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 Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, um, we have also here this uh, yellow dimension and also like the different perspective, you know, and we have the house and the girl. How can you interpret a little bit how, why you mix you mix this uh, exterior and interior and also the girl? Why you didn't put a, a woman, a bigger woman or a farmer or something like this? What, what was the, the idea in this? I like the flash? flower. There's like botanical theme kind of in all three pieces so it's the field of sunflowers was from like a contemporary magazine um the little greenhouse is from like a vintage like gardening magazine that i have um a big stack of that i got from my library <laughs> and then um her shirt has flowers on it so i sort of like connected all of them visually through like the plants Yes, 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 that's perfect. I thought the first time that I saw this picture, it was you. It's not me. I don't know who it is. <laughs> but it can be you. I mean, if you're saying it's me, it's me, it's me, everyone is going to believe you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I was, I, it was just a joke, but I was thinking why in some points, as Belen does, she's working like autobiographical, I don't know like with selfies and self-portraits, she's working with these kind of images and you are working with someone else history to reinterpret it and to put it in another context. How, what's your feeling about this? Why why you choose this or why you are not working with yourself? Just to have a little reflection about this. I've always been like, I have, I'm like the family keeper of all of my families. Okay. Vintage photographs and I have them and I've used them for other projects. Okay. Um, but I also collect them from antique shops and different places that I get all of the vintage photographs. Um, and I, I'm just always blown away that people get rid of them. Um, <laughs> it blows my mind. And so I feel like I've become like the caretaker of them. Um, You're saving them. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about them. And like, I really connect with all of them. And I like, I like to think about like, because this is obviously a school picture that's in black and white. So it's probably from the 50s or the 60s. Her clothes make it look like the like mid 60s. Um, so I'm like, who is she now? What happened to her? You know, I like have all of these questions about every single picture that I have of all of these people. Um, and so I always I love them and I just don't want them to like people to throw them away or them to turn into obscurity like um so yeah i try and save as many vintage photographs as possible <laughs> okay you you're having a hard work for saving all the pictures that everyone is throwing to the garbage but i, I think it's a great place i mean i work with historical photography and i think it's, it's really hard to be to see this situation because everyone is throwing them i think this project is amazing because you are in some point you are saving them from the past and you're putting in in a new future you're creating a new possibility of this image to have new meaning and new sense and this is amazing thank you so much sarah for being with us thank you for everything you have done uh, for the festival also last year and the exhibition that you have done during the last year also at your universities thank you so much for everything that i i, I didn't have the opportunity to say before but 
for you to know that that, that we are we really, really happy with everything that you are doing with photography. Okay, thank Pablo, you so much. Yes. There is a question from okay. Johnny Rueda. Sorry, sorry about this, but I can I can see you uh, if you're asking for a question because I, I have my my screen with the image that we are showing. Sorry <laughs> about this. Don't bother in, in disturbing me. It's okay. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Johnny, you can ask the question if you want. But we can't hear you. Can you hear no. me now? Yes. Okay, cool. So I want to say you guys are doing an amazing job doing the technical part, you know, two sides. It's great. Um, I want to say about Sarah's, just add a, a, a comment that a, what Sarah is working on is, is, a, is a movement called found photography. And it does exist. And, and that's one of the, the techniques that I work with. So I think it would be um, important for Sarah to, when she works with this technique using other pictures, use use the term found photography because that is that is where the work falls in as a as a style. Nice. Makes sense. Yeah. There is some book or something that you can recommend us, Johnny. Um, I well, if you go on Instagram and just follow the hashtag found photography. Do okay. uh, you see yeah. what people do and work with this? And, and this is um, something that I like a lot, and especially like me as a photographer. Like Sarah said, you know, people throw these things away. And in reality, there's so much life to it that, you know, like, uh, what's the name? Um, um, uh, Vivian, uh, Vivian Miller was the name of the photographer that was found years after Meyer. she passed Meyer. away. Meyer. Yes, Mayer. So it falls into that because, you know, it's how come people throw away this amazing stuff? Like mm -hmm. I have a stack of, of uh, diapositives that somebody just simply throw away. And it's like beautiful work. And it's a white, what is it in the garbage? So that's what I wanted to say. Fun photo. Yeah, I also have like rolls and rolls of negatives that I <laughs> bought from people. Glass plate negatives. I mean, I have everything. Oh, beautiful. Okay, you have to invite us to your place, Sarah, to see all your collection. This is going to be Amazing. the next the next meeting about Sarah archive. Okay, thank you so much, Johnny. If you have any book or something that you can recommend us, please put it on, on the chat. It would be amazing for everyone to have more books and information. Uh, okay. Do we have Dimas from Argentina now? Uh, is she here? I don't know. Yes, me. He, he's here. Okay, nice. Yeah, Hi. it's a he. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Well, um, I'm both a visual artist and an architect, and I used to work with different techniques. The name of this piece is D plus N, which is a reference for both the animals I embroidered on, on this piece, but also my own name and the name of Nalila, my friend, who's the other one holding the teacup. Um, so it's basic, basically a photo montage of two different pictures I took in, in different moments and contexts. So uh, I intervened it with embroidery. Um, I often create artworks that have to do with, you know, they are like souvenirs or mementos or pieces of commemoration and celebration because my memory tends to be too loose and I often forget things and uh, I, I tend to connect things differently than the way they really happened. So I don't know, it's working on, on stuff like this uh, always makes me connect things in a better way than I would do if they, they are, you know, stuck in, in my head, in my mind. So, well, in it, with this particular piece, I, I had this very concrete idea. I had a very clear idea that I wanted to represent the connection I had with Nalila, who was my friend for many years. And well, I have these two different series of photos I, I took, as I said, in different moments. And well, the connection uh, through, through tea and water uh, was recurrent for me by the time. So I thought about, you know, the, li the liquid element was um, a place where we could be mixing and joining and combining with each other as uh, so our friendship was, you know, so it was like, um, 
like a metaphor, of course. So, well, when I remember these these two different series, I I went all through the photos and I took these two. So, well, the idea of adding animals came almost instantaneously because I don't know. I, I used to to think of ourselves as seals because I don't know. We were always thinking on the sea, and, you know, talking about such stuff. But then I started to think that we were, that our personalities were closer to animals like this, you know, a dolphin and an arrow. And there was this connection, you know, between our names and, and you know, these letters. I, I don't know, sometimes I, I just take things, simple things such as those to start something. So, well, it was just a matter of cutting both pictures, mostly cutting the, the first one, the one with the sticker, yes. then overlapping it over the other, and and then, you know, having some test uh, with trace paper on the photo montage, so I could, you know, draw the dolphin and the narwhal in the right sizes, so I could then make the embroidery. Nice. And then, yeah, so, you know, the last part is the most difficult difficult one, probably, because you need to be very careful when you're making, you know, these uh, perforations, so you can pass the thread, you know, <laughs> because, I don't know, any mistake could ruin the whole thing, both the surface of the photograph and also the, the future work of embroidery. When you cut it, you put it in another paper, you, you you put them in a new paper. I make to make it uh, um, bigger the paper at the time to embroider it. No, I mean it's um, sometimes I make some tests, like in this case in particular because I needed to be really careful with both pieces because I only yes. have one photograph printed of everyone of each one. Sorry, yes. uh, but so I I really had to. To you know, be a little of a calculator. I don't know how, how I should say that, but you know, I, I needed to measure things, you know, and and be very really careful with that. But the only thing I put um, under it is like a piece of cardboard, or could be I don't know how you call telgopor, polycarbonato in English. Yes, like you know. PVC. Um, yeah, the other one, the one you have, uh, the white one with bubbles. Yes. What well, that one? So, yeah, tell me. No, no, no. I, I, I was thinking the name. Uh, okay, well, but yeah. you put it in something so, and then you embroider it. I, I mean, is. Yeah, I, you, I, you need to make the perforation first. Then you have all the holes, you know. Oh, okay. You can see through the holes, and then you pass the the thread with a needle. Sometimes I, I work with wool also, or could be um, ribbon, also copper coat, you know, from cable, yes. electric cable. But that's really hard to work with. <laughs> and I don't know, this is a very simple piece. And what I like of this one is that it really represents what friendship was to me and keeps being to me. And probably the best part is that uh, we had a little fair, uh, an art fair uh, once, and a relative of mine bought it for, you know, making a present for her best friend. So it was really cool because uh, it was like, I don't know, I really didn't want it to, to sell it, but I, I sometimes felt like I was still keeping a lot of my work and it was still kept in, in between, you know, my boxes and folders and things. And I don't know, sometimes I, I took some pieces and tried to see what could happen with people. You know, it's, it's not only about making exhibitions sometimes, but you, you need to make them, you know, go to someone else's hands. Yes. And what I love about this one is that I, I, I know uh, where it is and uh, the people having it is really happy with them and that it means a lot of what I meant to put in, into it. So I don't yes, know. That, 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 that's important to control where your work is, because if you want to do an exhibition yeah. or something, you can just say, OK, give it to me for a month or something and you can do the exhibition. And that's great. 
I love Excellent. this this image, and as you have been talking about this, and I was that was what I thought when I saw it. It's in some point that you are changing the past, you know, your memories. You are changing your memories. Yeah. For one side, talking about friendship, uh, on the other side, thinking in the future, you know, because it's like a gift, and it's also more meaning. This story that you're explaining that someone else buy to give it to someone else that it was its best friend. I mean, it's like the best friend create this image and. Is going to a new best friend and is having like a new meaning. I think this, this image is great, not just technically, but conceptually, it is amazingly well think. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, thank you so much, Dimas, for being with us. Uh, we are going to go to with Stu because we have we are going late as usual, but anyway, we are having fun uh, with your explanations. Thank you so much. If we have Stu with us, he's coming. From New Zealand, is he here, Laura? Laura, Stu, are you there? Should be. Well, I am here, but okay. I'm not sure. I don't know if you see it in the list because I can't. I can't see anything because I have the computer. I'm using the computer for the other thing. No, I don't see him. Okay, maybe he just left. Uh, no, he, he's just sleeping because in New Zealand, I think it was six in the morning. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's true. It's, it's not the anyway, best time. If he's coming later, we can go back with him anyway. Andrea, you are there. We know that you are there. Can you explain a little bit about this image skater images? Andrea is from Colombia. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, first, Thanks for the okay. Can you hear her? Really? No, it's it's, uh, it's cut. It's not only me. Okay. Checking. No. I was also checking if everything is if, if the rest fast were okay. No, Sorry, so Andrea. Your connection is not it's okay. so good. We couldn't hear. Can you try again? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Sorry>. I was. <laughs> it's okay. I was just saying hi, and I was saying that I'm happy to show these pictures because it's a project that I started a long time ago. Okay. Uh, but I. I was working on that in a different way. So I, I am an artist and I love to mix many, te many techniques. Uh, and for me, it's hard to limit every single technique. For example, in photography, it's hard for me to keep the photograph in the same way that I take the picture. So in this case, these photographs are about identity and emptiness. So I thought I I don't want to use photography just uh, as a copy or or a capture of a moment. So I decided to experiment. Actually, it was my first time doing experiments on damaging the pictures. Yeah, because I was using sandpaper, burning them. And in the case of this picture, I, I thought, okay, uh, the project is about identity and I am trying to explain how these youth people in my country um, are facing life right now and how many opportunities they have. So I want to use the technique to reinforce the concept and the message of my pictures. So I thought this uh, skateboarding culture uh, is really connected with another urban expressions like graffiti or street painting or street art so i thought why or what will happen if i paint this picture so i took the risk because i thought well i will damage the picture and lose it forever because i won't recover it if i fail but i start to prove and finally i use a spray painting and i just did it and i next I was like, I don't, I don't remember the word. Like when you, como when you did this, but over the grass. 
Yes. And that was the result. And I was, yes, I, I, I got the result that I wanted because I wanted to cover the faces of all these people. In the case of this project, um, I have many portraits, but I don't want to make my emphasis in the face of the people. Actually, I want to cover or break or burn or sand the face of the people. And it's a risk that I took, but I think that this project is working good. And I'm really happy because it's my first time exploring, actually, because I was, I had this kind of fear of damage. This picture, especially because I used to work with analogic photograph. Yeah, so if you have a copy and you uh, ruin this, you have to make a new one and it's a really long process and I had this fear but I am really happy for taking this risk and seeing all the works and all the pictures that uh, are making many artists exploring with experimental photograph, I see that I have a long way uh, because it's my first time when I see that you can do many, many things with, I don't know, eyes, not just burning or with some conventional techniques that maybe we have around, but maybe like seeing these projects and these processes is encouraging me to make more things. And that's really nice. Great. And that's why we well, are doing that's this, all. You know? Trying yeah. to share more and everyone to meet each other. In the end, for us, the most important that you know that there is a, a community, a worldwide community working also with intervening photography and you can have more ideas, more energy and sharing with everyone can make that you are not working alone. You know, in the end, what we are yeah. working is going against loneliness, you know, <laughs> at some point. And we are happy yeah, that, and you sometimes... that and that you are going to use this for keep working. Yeah, and sometimes... Well, I feel this like something personal. Sometimes I had ideas and I said, no, it won't work. But I see that some other people did that thing, those <laughs> things. And I said, OK, it could work. So yes, why yes, not? Yes. So it's good. OK, thank you so much, Andrea. We are so happy of, of seeing your, your project here. It's different of the rest, but it's also another kind of intervention. We are, we are so happy of having you. Um, Johnny? Can you explain what you did here? Johnny. He's mute. <laughs> Wait. He going on mute, I don't know why. So, <laughs> um, so I was going to say that uh, I work with um, my base is photography in analog photography and but i became a multimedia artist because i like to explore with different techniques and materials and different things and at the same time i like to um tell stories with with like compositions so and i i like to when i see something it kind of reminds me of something else i kind of bring it together so this piece is called the gleaners um the gleaners was a painting of a, a, a jean francois millet on the 1800s. I wanna show you the, the actual painting. So I don't know if you can see, can you guys see? Can you guys see my camera? Yes, I can see. Okay. It's just, okay, it's, it's a okay. bit too small because we have the, the shared screen, but we can see. Okay, yes. so, but the, the gleaners is, um, there's a similarity between the position of the, the glitter, the ladies, and the one the, the one that I found. So um, I, I use the technique that I use, I found negatives, like using uh, found photography, mm -hmm. and those negatives resemble the painting. I don't know if you can see them here. Mm, cool. So, and it, you know, you can be lucky and you can be, but also, you know, when you pay attention, to things that you find around, you can play with them on those levels. So in the actual painting, there's also in the background, there is there is a man and, and a horse similar. So what I did is I put the two negative one on top of the other. And when I put them on top of the other and I and I develop it using the larger, the dark room. 
So I create that overposed image that was printed directly on the paper. And when I was developing, I did a solarization, which is when you turn on the lights before the, the developing finishes. So you add these kind of contrasting images where the negative becomes positive, the positive negative. So, but at the same time, I'm discovering things. And when, when you do these over, um, uh, um, overlapping negatives, uh, and you do the solarization, it creates this, um, um, one image becomes positive, the other one becomes negative on the same image at the same time. So anyone who has a dark room, you want to try that technique, it's, it's actually it's very interesting, it's fun. Um, and by doing so, I created this alteration of the original painting. And at the same time, the, the, the painter uh, he got criticized in, in very negatively because um, he was painting uh, peasants, you know, people just collecting what was left over. Yeah. And they say, why you use that as a subject? You know, it's the 1800s, yes. right? So today, this image, which is found through all these different elements in time, um, I wanted to use it to, to add to that criticism. Um, to say, you know, if you see the image, the, the woman looks like they're picking on the men's head. Hmm. And like, who's yes. picking on whom? Um, what is happening with society with all these different, you know, subdivisions of what is right, what is wrong? Um, you know, hashtag me too, uh, uh, abuse of power, and just kind of bring it together into one image to say, you know, uh, the men are criticizing the woman, the women are actually, you know, picking on them, what, what is happening in, in our society as, as, a, as a whole, right? So but I use that bringing those different elements together. Yes, I, I think conceptually it's really interesting because as you say, there are women from one side, men from the other, they are working. Uh, but on the other side, I think we can also pick this technical improvement or technique or situation that you said because it's like a, like a photo montage, like historical or traditional one, but with the new step, uh, a new a new a new step. I I, I, I choose this image because I, I, I think it has I, it really has a a meaning and this technique, and I really wanted to understand why how you did it, and now you explain it perfectly, and I think we can we can keep working with this. Thank you so much, Johnny. I don't know if anyone has any question, technical question or conceptual question for him, a fast one. If not, we are going to go with Andrea from Brazil. She was here. Uh, also here. With us. Hi, Andrea. Hi, how are you? Fine. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm appreciating this time, uh, looking the creative process of everybody. It's very rich. Thank you. And um, I'd like to say that I'm in photography for a, a long time since I entered, entered university in 1987. And today I'm a professor in university and I teach uh, some of this uh, historical process and alternative process. Um, and in my work of art, I use uh, a lot of them. Mainly, I sent I sent these cyanotypes for the intervene month. It's my first time to make some kind of um, painting in in the pictures, and I will put in the chat uh, my previous work. Um, that it's uh, it's better to understand why I'm doing this now. Um, I have this group also, and I will put the name of the group. The group is Grupo Lumen, that I work for five years now with uh, students, professors, and other people from the south of Brazil uh, in this kind of techniques. Nice. Uh, the name of uh, the work is uh, Fairy Circle, and uh, I start then I I, because of the pandemic, I was more in countryside okay. where I walk uh, a lot. 
and I started to to visualize uh, the mushrooms. That is not uh, very common uh, here. Here, it's because it, of the humidity of the the region I I was, and uh, for us it's not common to pick up uh, the mushrooms because uh, for us almost of them uh, were poison. Then um, I linked this with my previous work with the fairies, and I called the um, fairy cir cir circle. Um, fairy circle uh, because it's round, but I think it's a portal to a other, other realm because I work with a garden and fiction in the garden. And also, I think the garden is the place uh, for the women, uh, for one part, for healing. Uh, and since uh, medieval times, we have these herbs, these um, flowers, food, and I'm a person who have my own <laughs> organic garden in, in my house. Then it's a style of life also. And um, let me see what more I can say. <laughs> I work with brushes um, many times in my work. I prefer to make these marks on the paper. Okay. And uh, it's the gold uh, ink is a watercolor. It's watercolor? Yeah. Watercolor, yes. Okay, nice. You make the picture, then you do the cyanotype, and then you make the uh, intervention. Unfortunately, not it's appropriate from the internet because our mushrooms are very scarce okay. and not so beautiful like this. <laughs> and um, I want to re reinforce the idea of attractive um, food, but dangerous one because it's so beautiful you want to touch and want to that's i don't life. know make a tea or something like that that's life everything dangerous is, is something that you want to grab you know <laughs> okay okay thank oh, you yes. so much andrea uh i think i think it's really powerful i mean visually it's really powerful uh, the project is is super interesting hope you can share also this meeting with all your group also to make more connections internationally and them to know that we are more all around the world, people working with this kind of, we call experimental techniques. You can call them ancient or alternative techniques. It's the same. We're working yeah. with the same, but you are not just doing the historical techniques, but you are intervening it, you know, modernly mm -hmm. you are doing something new. And this is something mm -hmm. that we love about also this idea of experimenting, you know, because in some way you are looking for something new, looking for the future of photography, and we are going also in this direction. Thank you so much. We are going with the last one, Veronica. Thank you. Um, how are you, Veronica? Everything is fine in Galicia. Is 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 night yeah. now? Almost, more or less. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. Um, hi. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about uh, my work. So uh, this photograph that you are seeing now is part of uh, a work uh, called Albarizas, which is a, is, is a word in Galician language that is my, my mother tongue. It means um, apiari, apiario, that is a set of uh, hives. So uh, this is a photo that I took to, to my grandmother in her farm and she lives in a small village at the countryside. And I printed it, I print this photo at Katis Riquelme that is an artist that also is a passionate about experimental uh, photography. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I rec recommend um, a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also in this, in at this uh, workshop, she she show us the the beeswax bath. So I I was very impressed for the texture that is 
this texture is extremely soft uh, to the touch and also the beeswax bath it leaves groups and drops that also give the image a texture so i love work with the textures what's the name so, in spanish baño de cera de cera sí baño de cera de cera de, de abejas Ah, okay. <laughs> bees, bees, wax. And, and in which yeah. point of the process you use the wax bath? At the end, at the end, when the photo is printed. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So this this photo is uh, is based with this this wax. Um, the so and this this wax. Uh, is from my uncle's honey collection. So there is a relationship between the image, uh, the beeswax and my rural ori origin. So um, this photo is apparently a failed photo because you can see that it's a negative printed on, on paper. But uh, I wanted to use it uh, with the idea to recycle images that already made and printed to give them a second life different from the original one. So uh, I cut this figure of my grandmother to live as that emptiness of where are women in the history of photography that is the text that you can see there. It's small, but maybe you can see that. <laughs> yes, 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 we can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also marked the silhouette uh, of the paper with fire to leave more market the image. So uh, I use this beeswax as a base element for all the meaning it, it contains because wax is a substance that bees produced to protect the, the hive from external agents that can contaminate it. Uh, for me, this is a parallel to our ecological footprint as photographers. So this work has a double, double objective. Uh, for, one, for the one hand, to make visible the absence of women uh, photographers in the history of photography, and on the other hand, this work is a research on the process of artistic image production uh, through the eyes of ecological awareness and concern, concern for our, our ecological footprint as photographers. So I'm very concerned for the impact photography can have on the environment. So, um, this is the more or less the, the, the work. Thank you so much, uh, Veronica. We are also worried about what you said uh, with this situation with ecology and photography. We are thinking and we are working for having a conference during the festival about this thing, oh. because it's true that we are having big problems. I mean, we are not recognizing that we have a problem, so we really have a problem with this new boom of analog photography. We are creating all the time more and more and more ecological yeah. problems related with what we are doing with the chemicals of photography and I th we think in the festival that it's time to start thinking about this and changing some situations mm -hmm. there are a couple of different techniques that you can use uh, to do everything more yeah. ecological but we are far away from what we need for save this uh, planet you know if you want to change something we, we, we have to start uh, in our dark room to change things Thank you so yeah. much, Veronica. I think the Thanks. photography is amazing. You have teach us this technique with wax. I hope everyone can try this at home. And also this reflection about women's in photography is something that we are working also hard in the festival. We are having 65% of women doing mm -hmm. workshops and conferences during the festival. And this is a commitment that we have with gender equality. And I think it's something that we have to take into account because normally in the rest of the festivals, women are not having the same opportunities as men's, and we are trying to change this 
uh, for the best for the future of, of everyone. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. We are really, really happy. I mean, I was in love with all your works. Wait, uh, Fer, ha Fer has a question. Sorry. Okay. Fer, no, you no, raise okay. your hand. Fer, okay. Just a quick question uh, for Andrea. Uh, Andrea, what do you use the wax for? I didn't understand. And how do you use it? I mean, how is the process that you follow to use this wax? For me? Veronica. Yes, it was sí. Veronica, not Andrea. Ah, okay. <laughs> Just ¿Cuál es el, okay. ¿Cuál es el y cómo lo no problem. In English, please. Yeah. Um, it's very simple. I have the, the this, like this. Can you see that? Yes. So you put this uh, um, in a, can, can you say, in, in una olla? In sí. una... Como baño María. Sí. Yeah, can you explain that? Like the Baño Maria? The Bad Maria. Okay. <laughs> so, that... <laughs> so the wax, um, after the Baño Maria, <laughs> is liquid. So you, I have here the photo and other ones. So after that, you can put the photo inside that liquid. And after... Um, You, can, you have to wait for um, secar, to dry. Say secar to dry, to dry as, yeah. and you can see there that it depends is 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 very hot or very more less hot. You the the wax leave these drops, okay? So you have very a lot of possibilities with the with this es como que hace el revelado el paro el fijador todo eso y al final lo pasa por una capa de sí. de cera mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you so much Vero uh, Maria Fernanda okay. hope you are going to try that because you are also working with this kind of things and I think it's going to to give new ideas and new opportunities for your expression okay thank you everyone we are so happy of having you here There is uh, also are... one more, more sorry, <laughs> <laughs> one more person that wants to say something about Okay, it. let's go fast. If Sarah. not, it's going to be too late. I just had a question. <laughs> Come. It, yes, yeah, sure. Process this, like, in the United States, we call it encaustic. Would it be comparable to that? Using the beeswax? Encaustica. Encaustica. Ah, I didn't know that. Okay. Okay. I just didn't know if it was the same or different. I don't know because I didn't know this. I I will look for that. I don't know. I was just wondering. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, when you are doing encaustic painting, you are really putting the, the colors uh, in the wax and then you are painting with the hot wax with the pigments. She's yeah. not. She's not putting any pigments or anything. She's just putting like a like a slice. Yeah, yeah I yeah. also do it with putting the wax over images oh, okay. too. Okay. Nice. Okay. Nice. 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 Great. Okay. <laughs> That's a name in English. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. We are going to go to the next moment of this meeting. We are going to go to the groups. Uh, I think we have 47 people. We are going to have six different groups. Uh, You have to be patient because uh, Zoom is going to mix you randomly, okay? You are going to just to be in a group uh, with, I don't know who, and I have to change. If you, are, if, if, if you are two moderators in the same group, I just need you to wait. I'm going to take someone out, okay? Now you are going to be in a small group. In this small group, someone from the festival, I mean, one worker of the festival or someone that we have invited Uh, or it is going to be artists of the last year, of the next year, or the last year, or whatever, some friend of us are going to moderate. They have a question. Uh, if you have more time, if you finish this question, I just want you to think and to talk about this concept of intervening photography. Okay, you have one question. If you can do it fast, great. If you have more time, try to talk about this idea of manipulation of images and intervening photography. 
we have called it uh, intervening photography, but it can be also manipulation. I mean, it's, it's not so different, but we can have a debate about this in the end also, if, if we have time. You are going to have someone in your group that is going to have a question. Just uh, share with them, talk about a little bit closer to each other and have fun. And we are going to have 20, 25 minutes to talk about this question and see you uh, in the back in the, in the big groups, okay? Um, I said we are going to do six groups. Okay, see you guys. You just have to put um, <laughs> accept to go to the small group. If you don't, you are going to be like in the limbo in some place, I don't know where in the, in the internet. <laughs> Uh, if not, you have to wait or you can just go out and get inside and we are going to reassign you to any other group. Just be a little bit patient at the beginning. Okay, see you in 20, 25 minutes. See you. Okay. Uh, are important because uh, you learn how to stretch the boundaries of the medium of the photography. Uh, you you all learn how to, how to mix. Uh, I, I also study my... my Meaning of, of your father and... <laughs> yeah, pa yeah. Pablo, it's amazing. I just said your name and you appear. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice. Maybe if you always say your name three times. <laughs> you... <laughs> okay, good to know. Everything is, is, is doing perfectly here. No, it's behaving disaster here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if it's a disaster, it's your problem. You know, I'm just leaving to another group. Thank you. Es una fotografía y creo que no termina. No termina porque tenemos cosas como la fotografía encontrada, por ejemplo, ¿no? Como que alguien hizo una foto y no sabía dónde iba a parar su foto. Y para alguien toma un nuevo sentido y llega a otro lugar y es como que... Y ahí es donde doy clases. <ríe> Muy bien. Hola, Pablo. Vas Muy apareciendo bien. por ahí. Sí, acabamos de recibir a Fefo ahora. Ah, súper. No, era para saber Genial. si está todo bien. Si está todo bien, me... Pablito, ¿cómo estás, Pablo? Súper. ¿Qué tal, Fefo? ¿Todo bien? Todo bien, todo bien. Un gusto. Súper. Me voy a otro grupo a ver si hay algún problema, que por ahora está en todo el grupo está todo bien. Es raro esto, pero bueno, me parece muy ¿Podemos bien. Podemos sobrevivir. Vamos hablando. Disfrutar. Recién de... empezamos. De... Something that is like... In the, hola Pablo. <laughs> Something that is um, that that I, what I'm passing through, you know. So in the moment, probably I don't see it, and in the work, probably I see it, but but I don't feel it yet. So, so with the time, compared to experimental photography. Well, I started at uh, traditional photography, the black and white. And today is not more the traditional one <laughs> uh, because it's so so long a time ago and with color photography also in films. But since uh, the start, I was more interested in cross process. Uh, um, what, what's the name in English? Sistema de zonas. And so Adams, uh, Sistema de Zonas é... Sistema de Zonas. Sistema de Zonas, oh, zone system? Yeah, zone system. Sí, sí yo, yo que, si, si puedo responder lo que dice. Uh, sí, sí es, yo creo que al, al, al alterar solamente un filtro para hacer la imagen más clara o más oscura o más intensa o, o el color, si es solamente para dar esa, ese pop visual, Quizás no, pero si llevas la, la, el filtro a convertirlo, eh, que sé yo, que toda la imagen sea azul y que toda la parte, es, y hay un cambio total en el que, que afecte visualmente, que, que diga muchas veces qué pasó aquí, ahí, desde mi punto de vista, es donde empieza la parte esa de experimentación. No sé si, si los demás sí. están de acuerdo, pero así es como yo lo veo. Los demás, ¿qué piensan? No sé si yo yo pienso, <ríe> sí, yo también lo he pensado y pienso como que igual es que hay como unas reglas, ¿no? Eh, en general, como que en el mundo todo tiene como unas reglas y digamos que esas reglas hacen o, o estandarizan como todas las cosas de la vida, ¿no? Eh, 
estaba pensando yo un poco en, en Frankenstein, ¿no? Como, como Frankenstein fue el resultado de un, de un experimento, ¿no? Como de un médico, un cirujano que, que quiso llevar esas reglas o que quiso romper esas reglas tal vez, ¿no? Entonces siento como que en la foto uno puede respetar esas reglas, ¿no? Como esos estándares de la gama de grises o la gama de color o en Lightroom, como, como llegar a esos estándares de, de lo aceptable, ¿cierto? Como de, de lo que sería una buena fotografía según las reglas, pero yo siento que ya cuando tú traspasas esas reglas y traspasas esos límites es cuando empiezas a ver qué pasa, ¿no? Y siento que también hay... Uh, hay una motivación, yo creo que a veces puede ser accidental, como esas fotos que en el laboratorio se dañaban, pero al final uno decía, quedó muy bonita, la quiero conservar, pero también siento que, que, que para que sea un proceso experimental así como consistente, hay, hay que tener como una intención, como esa, esa intención como de buscar qué más pasa, ¿sí? como esa intención de, 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 de romper esas reglas, como de transgredir esos estándares de de, de, lo, de lo que estaría supuestamente bien, ¿no? Y, y pues también siento que hay como niveles, ¿no? Como que hay unos que vamos poco a poco viendo como qué pasa, hay otros que pues definitivamente se arriesgan mucho más y llegan como a, a otros resultados, pero pues yo pienso que... que Que sea experimental cuando se rompen esas reglas. <ríe> no sé, es lo que yo pienso. Está bien dicho. Para mí también. Al final, eh, si es experimental es porque se sale como un poco de lo establecido, ¿no? De lo comúnmente mmm, entendido como base o formalismo fotográfico. Entonces, bueno, es verdad que tú estás modificando o haciendo como esa intervención de modificar el contraste, ¿no? Como tú dices en Photoshop, estás alterando como la imagen raw o originalmente que ha captado tu cámara porque eso no es experimental pero no dejas como de estar dentro de algo que no es experimental ¿no? tú modificas el contraste y ya sabes lo que va a pasar lo, es lo, lo que, sabes a dónde vas a llegar sabes que vas a mejorar algo y si no lo llevas al extremo no pasas como la frontera un poco de llegar a esa sorpresa o de llevar la propia imagen a, a otro extremo ¿no? para mí sí que experimental para mí sí que incluye siempre la ruptura y la la, la provocación mental propia incluso ¿no? de, de la alteración de algo que no, que no te esperabas o que no es lo, 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 lo sí, lo estándar yo ahí estoy súper de acuerdo claro, claro de de hecho, hecho, yo creo que... <risa> dale, dale. desde mi punto de vista yo pienso que, que el momento de la experimentación comienza cuando tú tienes una intención de curiosidad de algo, cómo quedaría, cuál sería el resultado si tú lo modificas de una manera. Creo que la, la intervención no, no, no solamente es digital o, o puede ser una intervención que tú puedes hacer a través de pintura, puedes utilizar la fotografía para hacer un collage, puedes de miles de maneras. Solamente que la curiosidad que te lleva como artista de cambiar o modificar una imagen y, saber, y, y ver qué, va, qué, qué resultado vas a obtener de eso es lo que es la motividad que te lleva a, a hacer una experimentación y en este caso con la fotografía Pero algo que quería decir de, es uh, por ejemplo cuando yo tomé la imagen que tomé um, no sé si está bien ¿No ¿recuerdas tu nombre? se me olvidó tu nombre Melissa Melissa que okay, por ejemplo trabajas en el cuarto oscuro ¿verdad? sí hacer este efecto. entonces en el cuarto oscuro en este caso mi imagen la logré al, supo, a, al hacer una suposición de dos negativos, que la coloqué en, 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 el, en, la, en el revelador, entonces cuando se proyecta la imagen, ya ahí tienes una alteración, ya, ya la imagen cambia completamente. Lo mismo como, claro, con, claro, con, claro. Cuando, tomas, cuando tomas dos fotos sobre el mismo negativo también, puedes crear una composición sí. y puedes hacer una alteración total, entonces ahí también empieza la, la, la intervención. Igual yo pienso que muchas de las cosas que en un momento son experimentales con el paso del tiempo se van a, a normalizar, ¿no? Como que bueno, claro. seguramente muchas de las cosas que para este tiempo son o están estandarizadas y es lo normal, 
Eran en algún momento fueron sí. experimentales, ¿no? Y seguramente, uh -huh. por ejemplo, la fotografía digital es resultado seguramente de mucha experimentación y seguramente lo que para nosotros ahora es experimentar, pues en unos años ya no será, ¿sí? Como que también creo que va a pasar eso. Por ejemplo, el bordado en la foto es algo que ahora es, es, está muy frecuente, ¿no? Como que es un recurso bastante, bastante usado. En su momento sería muy experimental. Ahora digamos que todavía lo es, pero yo también siento que, que tiende como a masificarse. Todo tiende a masificarse en esta época. ¿No? Sí, pero no, no dejaría de ser experimental porque sigues interviniendo la foto. No importa que se, se haga eh, masivo, ¿no? ¿no? O sea, estamos... Tal vez sí, pero puede que eso se vuelva una tendencia, ¿sí? Digamos que, no sé, yo siento que, por ejemplo, la, el entonces, regreso sí. de la foto análoga ya es una tendencia. <risa> entonces, pero entonces sí. dejaría de ser experimental si fuera una tendencia, por ejemplo, el bordado, como dices, ¿no? Claro, pero ahí yo estoy no de sé. Contigo porque lo que se hace, o sea, lo que se haría tendencia es la técnica, pero el bordado un, que cada persona va a hacer siempre va a ser único. Entonces ahí yo sí que le veo el punto, ¿no? Como que se bueno, podría... El bordado industrial. <risa> claro, a no ser que empiecen a vender los patrones entonces ya, como la ropa una impresora de fotografías que te las borde claro. puedes coger los patrones de colores ah, de yo no sabía quién parte, estaba hablando sí, la voz de Dios estaba ahí, sí, era como apareció alguien de, del otro lado sí. no, nada. pero la, yo creo que la experimentación igual, está buenísima las preguntas porque te hacen yo como creo... La experimentación al final es en, en el individuo cuando decida voy a hacer algo diferente o hacer algo más con esto que tengo enfrente. Con lo que ya Entonces, existe, ¿no? Con lo que ya existe. Entonces inter, da, ahí es, nace del artista como tal individualmente independiente de qué técnicas utilice. Por ejemplo, con el, 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 el cyanotype, cyanotip, uh, yo lo uso, pero yo no lo uso desde el punto de vista fotográfico, yo lo uso para pintar. Entonces yo pinto con él, pero no, no utilizo el colocar una imagen transparencia para, para recrearlo como fotografía. ¿Y entonces, entonces ¿cómo de, lo usas? ¿Solo pinto? Pinto. Pinto con él y entonces al, al colocarlo con el sol y demás puedes crear eh, efectos increíbles que son, no sé, pues, por ejemplo, no sé si puedas ver uh, dónde está. ¿Y esa pintura que está ahí? En el, en el caballete. Es una pintura que mezclé a uh, cyanotype con pintura blanca y, y con uh, tinta china. Y luego entonces pinto con él. Como, entonces cuando lo colocas al sol, esa pintura va a cambiar y se convierte en un efecto diferente. Entonces es un elemento fotográfico, pero que no es necesario tener que utilizarlo para fotografía. Entonces ahí también entra la, la, la experimentación. ¿Eh? Son, son químicos para fotografía pero no los utilizo para fotografía entonces yo estoy utilizando ese elemento base de fotografía pero lo llevo a otro nivel que me da colores únicos colores que, que es como mezclar una paleta pero utilizando un químico fotográfico perdona que les interrumpa pero vamos de nuevo al grupo grande okay. para compartir las, las vale. reflexiones vale. nos vemos ahora Gracias. Un os he apuntado cositas vale. así que ahora las comentamos gracias Bien. a todos eh. Astrid, please continue the story. <laughs> no, 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 it's the end. No, I was kicked out. It's like a commercial in a TV. <laughs> yeah, it's one minute, no. Pablo. No. This is the Super Bowl. We are, we have to go. So much go on. <laughs> No, I know. Sorry about this, but life life is hard, you know. No, I mean, <laughs> we have been hard. here for an hour and an hour and 49 minutes, you know, talking. I know. Hi, Pablo. If you have had, we love good, you, Pablo. You you can keep debating on Instagram, or you can just send letters and things like in the past, or you can just make a new group or something and keep sharing. 
because I mean, I, I, I know that people must go to do some things, you know. You they have must... to go water your plants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a lot of things to do, you know. We have been two hours here sharing. And also we are going to have at least 20 more minutes. Please uh, be patient because if you, if you have to leave, you can just leave. It doesn't matter. We are going to share uh, the thoughts that you have been sharing in the groups. Um, this is going to take longer than 10 minutes, okay? If you can stay, amazing. If not, it doesn't matter. We have had a lot of fun and we have shared a lot of great ideas and techniques. We are so happy that you have been here with us sharing. And this, this is a conversation. This is just a starting of a long conversation. We don't want you to be alone anymore. And that's why we are creating these kind of meetings. Just, just keep going, you know, we have Instagram, we have all these new platforms to share. Just connect on Instagram and keep and keep talking. Thank you so much. I have been in all the groups and you, I, I saw your faces of happiness. And that's what gives us energy to keep working hard in this hard situation. Thank you so much for everyone for being here. We are going to start with Sara. Uh, if you can tell us, Sara, what you have been debating in your group. This is just to have like a lot of different ideas. And oh no, wait, wait. We are going to do one thing before you. Okay, we want Belen, Villanova, because I know that people is going to leave in some point. Okay, okay, because this is going to get longer. In this point that we have everyone here, we want to listen Belen. Uh, if she can speak a little bit about the exhibition, why? I don't know, Belen, if you want to say something to everyone, uh, it would be amazing to, to have a couple of words from you talking about the, the exhibition. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's amazing uh, the, the word present for the convocatoria. Well, in Spanish, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, is uh, congrat uh, all. Um, I don't know. I I I I know. I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> great idea and talk. Uh, uh, Say it in you... Spanish if you want, Belen, and then. She's overwhelmed. So <laughs> <many> <laughs> well, I will try to do my best. It's, it's, <laughs> let's see. And um, half of the people here also speak Spanish, so it's not a problem. Okay. Eh, sí, hemos estado recién de gran charla eh, <laughs> y hemos concordado todos que hemos estado hablando en esto que es la fotografía experimental. Eh, que dentro de ella está la intervenida, ¿no? Cómo querer ponerle un límite a esto de la intervención, que en realidad es, es muy grande, no, no, no tiene una definición, ¿no? Y era lo que tratábamos de, de buscar al principio, pero después como que concordamos todos en el grupo recién que estábamos comunicando y más con todo lo vivido durante este mes, ¿no? Que habían muchísimas... Eh, eh, muchísimos proyectos súper, súper buenos, súper increíbles, donde entraban de esto, de una fotografía intervenida, si se quiere, o experimental. Eh, bueno, ahí estábamos justo debatiendo y se cortó, <ríe> pero está bueno para poder seguir hablando. Y yo también estudiar inglés, perdón. <ríe> para, pero, julio, para Julio, Belén, no te preocupes. Eh, <ríe> Sí, sí, voy, voy ahí con... A ver... <risas> y más de la, de la exposición, ¿quieres decir algo de, tu, de la convocatoria? Sí, la, la convocatoria la verdad que me sorprendió. Me sorprendió calidad de trabajos. Y bueno, hasta me pusieron hasta con mucho pensamiento, digamos, en el sentido de, de poder ver, eh, buscarle como un hilo conductor a todo, ¿no? Me costó muchísimo porque había muchos proyectos muy buenos, pero sí vi esto de, de la necesidad de expresión, ¿no? De expresarnos uno mismo, quiénes somos, eh, qué es lo que queremos, y yo creo que este diálogo que se hace con las imágenes, eso es fotografía intervenida, ¿no? Este, el, dialogo, el dialogar e interrumpirlas, operarlas o hacer lo que sea, porque... También hubieron film sub, hubieron algunos que mandaban doble exposición, eh, como que no está muy claro, pero 
está bueno que no esté muy claro, porque lo estamos buscando, ¿no? Estamos en este pensamiento. Laura. Sí. Yes. Sí. Can you say some ideas what she was saying? Yes. Um, well, Belen was just saying about well the previous conversation we had in the group, but first, like, thanks everyone who who sent their work for the exhibition, and she was overwhelmed with all the all the um, uh, presentation, all the dossiers that she saw, and she says also that uh, all the works made her think a lot about uh, uh, conducting thread or something like the necessity to express ourselves so it's a kind of dialogue with the image that she found uh, has a as a um, like technique or as a as um, a way to express ourselves it's like creating a new language a new dialogue with the image and she say also that there were so many techniques that she was struggling to find out if it's intervene or not but actually it was because it's been so or is a double exposure, so you made this with an intention to to intervene on the on the on the machine on the camera. So it's creating something with your uh, with your intervention as well. So yeah, basically, I think I don't know if there was something else. <laughs> I got lost. Eh, es que es básicamente eso. Todo gira entre esos pensamientos, no? Es como un y que también es para debate y pensarlo y no seguramente nunca lleguemos a una definición pero está bueno el pensarlo. Yes, she said that this uh, intervening photography is not a clear technique because it's not a technique, it's a mix of different techniques. It's an attitude, it's a dialogue that you are having with the image. And I think this is this is really interesting to keep thinking what's it's our relationship with photography in general and with one image in concrete. Uh, in some point, we were also debating with Laura about if this might be called intervened or manipulated. And we say in the same, in, in the end, it's the same because you're modifying in somehow the image. I think this is not a clear concept. And as Belen said, it's not necessary to have a, a clear definition of what is intervened photography because it's almost all of these techniques are doing intervention because they are modifying. If it's not the image, as you can take it from the camera, it's intervening in some point in the lens, in the camera, in the production, in the printing. Everything is changing the image and our relationship with this image that in the end is an industry. As we have Kodak that has created this classical point of view that we have of reality with the images. If we are changing this point of view, we are intervening our photographies. Okay, thank you so much, Belen. She was really overwhelmed. And we have been working with her and Astrid really close to try to find an idea. And I think the result is, is amazing. And thank you so much for being part of this exhibition and also being part of this meeting. Okay, now we are going to go to the groups because we just want you to go home when we are closing this in 15 minutes more, 20, if you can stay amazing, just to see what were the debates in the different groups, just to have like ideas, you know, ideas, 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 ideas to keep thinking because this is a dialogue that is starting. Thank you so much, Sara, for being here. Sara is going to be the next year uh, in the festival in the summer. She's going to be in Barcelona doing some workshops on how to intervene uh, the streets with the photography. Hope you can come and enjoy her workshop. What was the debate in your group, Sara? Hello. Okay, our debate uh, was about uh, if intervention and manipulation of photography is experimental photography and also where it starts or in ends, uh, <laughs> what were at the, the nature and the limits of, of this kind of technique. So all of us think that this uh, kind of technical technique, uh, manipulation and intervention is definitely experimental photography because for us um, it starts in the moment in which the author decides to modify the original picture. So there is, in fact, there is no limit, even if the, um, if the proposal is um, to have an accidental result or with a definite uh, intention, 
we consider that is is an experimental process and also um, we feel like is the curiosity of modify the image that make uh, this to be experimental um that's what we have been talking about <laughs> amazing yes. yes i think I, I was just there listening to you i don't want to bother your debate but i think it this is the attitude interesting i yes. mean the manifest of the last year was about this exactly what's the attitude of experimenting and in some point you were debating about the limits if, if in some point uh, embroidery of photography uh, start to be like the canon of photography. What's happening is if everyone in the world is doing embroidery in photography, in some point, I mean, it's like an utopia of the future. And the debate was also if it, if it, if it stopped being experimental because everyone was doing it, you know? And I was thinking, this is, this is, this is crazy, but in some point, if it's not industrial, I mean, if you are creating, if, if, if this manipulation is handmade, it might continue being experimental, you know, because it's handmade, it's unique. It's something yeah. that you create for some reason. You choose a technique and you use it because you have a message. And I think this is one of the most important thing. And also in some point, we have seen this a lot with experimental artists that you are like jumping from one technique to the other because mm -hmm. experimentation also is something personal. You know, you are like one year working with cyanotype one year working with double exposure. And this is normal because experimentation is like you are looking for the limit. When you have understand the technique, in the end you say, okay, I want to go the next step. You know, and you go to the next step and the next step and the next step. That's why experimentation has no limits because it's an attitude. It's not just related to a product, but to having this idea of keep going to seeing the, the world in a new point of view. And I think I, I just wanted to say this in the group, but I don't want to bother you. And I thought, okay, I can just share it with everyone. Don't feel bad because experimentation has no limits. You know, there are other techniques and other techniques and other techniques and other techniques. And this is something good from the festival that you have 15 different techniques and you can do a workshop of one and then a workshop of another one and another one and learning new things to implement in your work. And when you have a lot of techniques, you can choose the one that you need to say a message or an idea, you have more more tools to say what you want. That's why experimentation in the end is never going to stop because it's never going to be industrial or at least we have this, this idea. Okay, thank you so much, Sara, and your group. Mm -hmm. I hope you had fun. We had, I had a lot of fun being yeah. there in that group. Carol, can you tell us about your group? What happened there? For Did you have sure. fun? We had fun. We had amazing. <laughs> we had an amazing exchange, actually. But we missed the last part. It was uh, we were in the middle of something. Better. Yeah, but <laughs> we are. I'm sorry, Sarah. It was super interesting. I hope we have a chance to to keep talking about it. So, okay, uh, brief. I we had two questions regarding um, these kinds of um, intervention techniques and manipulating techniques. Uh, should we be teaching those techniques in our schools? And the second part was, uh, should we have, um, should we teach more about visual culture to young people? So we had uh, these main questions. Uh, on the first one, we had two points of view. Uh, the first one was, um, we are a bit scared of uh, teaching these kind of techniques in art schools. So, because we maybe, end up uh, labeling everything, like uh, having like fixed ideas about uh, those techniques and the way we operate with photo. And on the other hand, we have this need of, yeah, we need to have the spaces to, to learn these things, not just on the internet, not just online. We, we need to, to go to school and to have a space to learn about new things and to be creative and to empower ourselves by doing new things. and don't stop just there thinking about what pictures and what we can do with pictures. And that's the first thing. On the second one, um, we also had two, two positions. One is uh, maybe we don't need to teach visual culture to young people because we already know more than, than we think. So they we are, know more than what we think. Yeah, we all 
no oh, okay. that way think yeah in general like yeah because uh we are we were also talking about the thing like we the increase of images and the media and everything in our current society so yeah but because of that we we need to be aware that maybe some people we need to teach young people about the power of images and how to relate to images and how to uh, maybe build ourselves, you know, build ourselves uh, from images. And also because we are in this uh, visual situation where we are seeing each other through a, through a screen right now. So maybe we need to be, to have more awareness on that. And also it's important to, to use this kind of techniques and technology in education to maybe make um, even children more engaged in in classroom and in the learning process so that's it i think we it can i be hope good because in I some had point this is it. like a game you know experimental photography and alternative photography has this point of as we said handmade that kids really can play with it you know and understand what this is idea of photosensitive that you can find photosensitive in everything you know in plants from this point they can start thinking how you are doing pictures because the history of photography is it's fucking crazy of understanding all this the technology of how you can have this image in the end, you know? And I think that kids can really understand much faster and going one step beyond if they understand what is this concept of photosensitive. I don't know, Sarah, Justin Kinnell, we have so many people now teaching at schools this kind of techniques and, and it's amazing. I mean, I think personally that, if, what, that we have to teach them we have to teach them because they are going to go one step beyond this reality that we have with images and this is the future you know the only way to to see the future of photography is giving the kids the opportunity to play with it you know free they are free we are not free we have just a, a mindset that with one kind of seeing images they don't they just play that's at least for me is a recommendation. And, and if they can come to the festival to learn even more, it might be <laughs> amazing. But if you have the opportunity to teach, to teach this kind of alternative photography, perfect. For sure, you have to learn the technique first or at the same time, you know, you have to learn the classical things and how to do it well. And then, or at the same time you can experiment, but for sure we have to keep uh, teaching this. And we have, with our experience with the workshops are this, People is, is getting crazy to understand these three, four, five amazing concepts to start working and your imagination go farther and farther and farther, there are no limits. And that's why, that's what we love of experimental photography. Thank you so much, Carol and your group. This was a question that Justin Kinnell asked uh, to work to meetings before and he was really, really happy with this question because he's also a teacher in experimental photography in Bristol. And, and it's amazing. We, we want to, to have more conscience about the necessity of teaching this kind of experimental photography. Patty Rose from Miami, Florida. Can you tell us what you have been debating in your group? Yeah, it's funny because our, we had a great group and we touched on many of the things that you all were just speaking of, okay. um, even though we had different prompts. So our prompt was uh, what drives you to do experimental photography, specifically uh, interventional photography and uh, what your thoughts on traditional photography okay. are. Um, a lot of, everyone seemed to have the same uh, concept where you, it's not just the aesthetic image, but pushing that image further, um, putting a hand, the artist hand on the image um, and storytelling, how do you evoke further emotion or your concept or your story within the image by manipulating it further and, um, and taking the medium of photography and uh, combining it with other artistic mediums and, um, and materials to then create something that evolves photography beyond what traditional photography is considered to be right now. And we had a great, great discussion. <laughs> and did you say something about traditional photography? 
Any comments, any ideas? Or yeah, um, a lot of the comments were that we're so bombarded with uh, images and particularly street photography images and how um, there are so many constraints by organizations and groups um, that adhere to these definitions of what photography should be that you know it's it's restricting it's restricting as an artist we are in some point tired of the canon of photography mm -hmm. do you have that feeling yes absolutely okay yes. we have it too <laughs> yeah absolutely okay nice uh we are tired of these kind of things and also um some people is uh, not happy with us as the festival because we are not professional photographers and we also are having this debate. Oh, but you are not doing, I don't know why, but did you study where, why? I don't know why, how can you say this if you don't, I don't know, control, I don't know what kind of technique or whatever. All, all the time is this debate because it, there is like a canon and we are trying to, destroy or to or to show that there is another kind of, of 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 world that the world of instagram and the world that we are living in has no borders from one side and from the other one there are no limits i'm not asking i have never asked any artist if they are artists or don't if they are photographers or don't you know because i don't care i mean if i if i love what you are doing, if you have something to teach, if you have a message, if you need to say it and say it in images, perfect. You know, I, I don't care if, if you are or don't uh, part of this photographical world, because it's, as you said, it's constraining. And part of the festival is this, we are going to do something horizontal. I don't care. You know, I don't care what's, what it might be. We are trying to figure out how it's going to be the future of photography. And we are having also a workshop with myself. This is auto-promotional, but anyway, uh, we're having a workshop about this and also about these projects, how we can create projects, how, how we can narrate what we want to say, how, how can we keep our project till the end? And I think it's important for creating a project, for having self-confidence. What we are doing is important. You know, maybe maybe you have just 200 followers or whatever, or you have never been accepted to any photographical school, or you have never ever won an award on any photographical school anywhere. But it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter because you have something to say, at, at least in our hearts and in our community. You have this moment to say, okay, this is my picture, I thought that, and this can just generate more things, you know? We are happy that you had this debate and I hope you can keep working from your side uh, of having more and more and more people uh, accepting the photography as it is. This is a medium. You don't need to have the credentials of being something important. It doesn't matter and I don't care. We don't care where you are coming from, who you are. We just want to know what you are doing and why. If you love it, we love it and we can share it from that point. Okay, thank you so much, Patty. Hope to see you in summer. This is for sure no, going you. to be a reality. Astrid, can you explain us a little bit what was your debate on? I think I'm sorry. I wanted to talk. Yeah. Ah. Thanks. <laughs> I saw Johnny raise his hand. <laughs> Johnny wants to say something or you were just clapping? <laughs> <laughs> Put your micro on. Always on mute. OK. <laughs> so sorry. Um, I just want to add to what you're saying is that there's a problem that we have here in Montreal, for example, that it's, a, it's a pretty much a, a student's town because there's like four universities, there's English, French universities, and they all have art programs. And whenever you go to present your stuff or talk about your photography, the first question is, it's not what's your name, what's your technique, what you do, is what you study. And if, if you didn't study any of this, you know, monopolize institutions, then automatically your voice is shut. There is, is a, is a, is a, um, it's a frustration for many people. That's why part of my frustration, that's why we open a, an art studio, at least for us to work and to do things and, and, and invite people. And we actually had an exhibition uh, in July. Um, and it's because of that. It's, it's, I think when it comes to arts, 
um, it should not be institutionalized and should not be uh, this is the technique that we, we teach you. We have to do this technique and that for in the pay sixty thousand dollars a year to yes. study this. Mm-hmm. And if not, if you don't do it, then you don't have no value. So I, I think movement like this, what you guys are doing, which is amazing, and, and thank you really, is is to open the doors to to many people from different countries. Look at this. We are thirty seven different countries having this you know, conversation and in the levels of education or the, or the exploration on different techniques could be from beginners to people doing it for many years, but it should simply be a, a process to have a voice, to have something to say, to, to gather, you know, to, to do things differently even, but is I'm against the, the, the framing of you have to go to this institution to be called an artist. So that's what I wanted to add to that. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. We don't care about schools. Okay. Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Alex from Greece, can you explain us a little bit what you have been debating in your group? Yes, uh, we had been debating about uh, the... Uh, okay, I'll get theoretical here. Sorry about that. About um, so I started from Ansel Adams, uh, being like uh, the previous pre visualization, uh, his concept of uh, which pretty much uh, boils down to uh, have in mind what you are expect, what you expect uh, when you take a picture. Uh, which means uh, get the feelings, uh, your feelings in order, uh, get uh, the message you want to convey in order, uh, get to know before you actually take the picture uh, how to edit it. And so um, uh, pretty much the, uh, the question was uh, uh, if anyone, if, if the team anyway had uh, in mind uh, the concept before actually uh, starting to play around with uh, their uh, pictures or whatever. Uh, so there wasn't much of a debate because uh, all three uh, that were in my group, apart from me, uh, were uh, actually having the same uh, uh, method of, of process. Uh, they were all be starting to uh, have their material in hand their materials, sorry, in hand, and then uh, see where it takes them. Uh, so I had to ask another question in order to get it, uh, to get some debate going on. If uh, the mixed, for example, uh, uh, Thelma was in my group and uh, she pretty much does one picture per year, uh, which is uh, her unconscious uh doing uh the work pretty much and uh sabrina the you might find here at uh pt mangrosi uh is doing only self-portraits and she does uh 3d sculpturing as well uh with her pictures and uh gustavo who i suppose left uh he's doing um uh, collage work and uh the interesting thing was that all three of them uh, start with uh, nothing in mind apart from their materials, uh, from what I got, and they uh, and the materials lead them to uh, the final outcome. Uh, so they didn't start with the concept, but they don't start. With the yeah, photographic yeah. Sorry, material. sorry. And from that point, sorry, yeah, I get with... lost. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty much the material leads everyone of my team anyway uh, to the concept and to the meaning and the message. Uh, of course, it's the unconscious uh, that is working most of the times or their instinct. Uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. And uh, so the final question I had to ask to get some debate going on and um, was if uh, there is a borderline between uh, the visual arts of uh, mixed media and uh, the interview photography. And 
Yeah, yeah pretty much the conclusion was that uh, it's an um, um, that having mixed media in photography uh, as a gallerist would say um, uh, actually leads to more artistic expression uh, of oneself. That's it. Then you interrupted us with canceling <laughs> our meeting. <laughs> That's life. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Alex. Alex is going to be during the workshop, during the festival, doing a workshop about a technique that he invented. Uh, he's going to explain a little bit more about uh, this I during the festival. Can explain Hope. right now some Sorry? forwards, some forwards about the technique. No, no, no. Here? I was just say I was just saying that okay. you are going to be during the festival with us. Okay, okay. And we are so happy about that. The last one because we have been. This, we are at yeah, 2020, we are 20 minutes late and people want to go to do something uh, more important than this. Astrid, can you close this meeting with the amazing reflections that were in your group? Yes, of course. And sorry, I will be sorry, very sorry. I, I just get lost, you know, that you were in the, just to talk and then we just went with Johnny and uh, just get lost. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so we we talk about um, the reason why, uh, if we have one, uh, do we make intervention and what is the most in interesting aspect for us to do interventions on pictures. And, and in our group, basically, the, the reason was that um, we have to go behind the two dimensions of a photography. No? The intervention help us to go to a third dimension or a different dimension of this photography and to change a little bit the way that we have to see uh, a picture. And also to have more relationship with our work. No? It's to have a, this, this link to the picture. And it was also very um, nice to see that um, Meryl was saying no, first that she was feeling a bit guilty because she doesn't have any concept when she did the photography. It was more about the material and the pain painting. So we were saying that intention is also a way to be more impulsive, to play without rules, without limits. So what, what you uh, were saying, Pablo, basically combining techniques also, because we don't want to use only one technique, we want to try everything. So um, this is the, the beautiful thing of intervent photography or manipulating in photography as we want to, to talk about that. And um, did you answer the second one? Do you think that there are more interest in intervening photography than in the past? Did you talk about that? In fact, no, because um, <laughs> we have a lot of things to say about the two <laughs> first part of the question. Okay. And uh, it's, it was um, uh, my opinion to talk overall about the first part. About the third part, I think that all the people that we are here have a lot of interest in intervent photography. So we talk just about our reason why we have a lot to say Great. about that. Great. Okay, thank you so much Astrid and thank you everyone that stays till the end. We are 30 right now and it has been two hours and a half, very long meeting because we really have this necessity of, of sharing. You know, that's why we have created the festival. That's why we have created this meeting because we need to share. And if you're leaving, when well, I mean, you are leaving the meeting now, okay? I'm just going to put you out everyone, but I mean, if you are leaving this meeting with the idea that there are at least 30 people in the world doing similar things to you and that you are not going to be alone anymore. I mean, during the night you can be alone, but during the day, at least when you are in your workshop, in your dark room, working, you have the feeling that you are not alone. We are happy about that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing from your heart, from sharing your ideas for being so grateful with what we are doing. This is the way that we are going to find new ideas. This is the way we are going to find the future of photography, sharing. This is the only thing that we can do to change the reality in the one that we are living and is sharing it. Okay, thank you so much for being there. We are going to, we have been recording this meeting. We are going to put it in something like a week on our webpage if you want to share it, amazing. If you want to share also, 
uh, someone else, if you met someone to, tonight, I mean tonight, today, during the, during the meeting, that you say, okay, this work is incredible, please share it on your stories on Instagram because someone else is going to meet this artist and someone is going to share it and reshare it and reshare it. If we can fulfill Instagram with experimental photography, this is going to be amazing for everyone to see photography from another point of view. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much for the team that is working with the festival and has been working here for you also to have in this technical situations in the good way. Also, thank you so much, Belen, for what you have been done for the festival. Uh, it has been amazing and thank you everyone. Hope we can meet personally in summer in Barcelona. And if not, keep in touch on Instagram. We are going to be there for you sharing every day. Thank you so much and have a lot of fun as we have today. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye.